What's going on, guys? It's Kyle Carroll from MyMMANews.com and Carroll's Corner MMA Podcast. Today I'm joined by Robbie Bellamere, who'll be fighting, fighting Kyle Kaler at Cage Wars 41 in upstate New York at Schenectady Rivers Casino. Uh, make sure you guys check it out by going to Cage Wars, get some tickets. Definitely worth it, CageWarsNY.com. Also, check out my sponsors, Pure Spectrum CBD, Diamond MMA, as well as Sticker Mule, and uh, Get Yo. All the, all the links down in the descriptions below. Check it out. Robbie, how you doing? Going good, man. Glad to hear. Uh, tell us a little bit about this fight against Kyle Kaler that you got coming up. Tell us a little bit about how you feel about it going in. Fucking, I don't know what to say other than that I'm confident and I'm intrigued because it's a true... What do you expect from him that you don't... That and, uh different from like say like a guy like Doolin. They're complete opposite fighters. Davey is a wrestling base type fighter. He looks to grind it out. Kyle looks to knock you out. So I expect to come home bloody. <laughs> um, no, what, what did you learn from a fight like that? You got in there, you said uh, Davey wanted to um, grind it out. Um, it was a hard fought three rounds. It was a tough fight for you. Now you're getting back into the cage against a guy you said wants to knock you out. But what did you learn most from fighting a guy like Davey Doolin? And um, how did you improve coming into this fight? You know, I realized in that fight, like mentally, was where I had my major shortcomings, like hesitance, uh, just the. I didn't engage when I should have engaged. I didn't let the hands go. I waited and waited when I should have been putting the pressure on him. I let him dictate the fight, put me where he wanted me to be. And then when I finally turned it on, it was too little too late. So, That's about it. So coming into this fight, that's something you obviously want to change. Um, can can we expo I know you don't want to give away your game plan or anything, but I assume you're going to put the pressure on and uh, move forward and try and uh, create some angles. I'm going to do whatever it takes. Definitely awesome. Uh, tell us some of your short-term goals compared to your long-term goals for your MMA career. Short-term, uh, I want to get out of amateur as soon as possible because I honestly believe nobody should be fighting without uh, pay. Okay. It's a dangerous sport, very dangerous sport. The, thing fighters go, the things fighters go through are pretty fucking brutal. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to go pro as soon as possible, and I want to not lose on pro. I want to stay undefeated and rise up the ranks as fast as possible. Awesome. Tell us a little bit about the gym you train at up in Canada. Who are the coaches you work with? Some of the guys that are going to be cornering you. Um, tell us a little bit about your, your training routine. Uh, my sensei, Gary, he's a very high fight IQ. He's always giving me little pointers how to just break down the opponent bit by bit. It's not always about, you know, just fucking, oh, like, let's bulldoze through him. Like, that's not what fighting is. There's got to be strategy. So he's always fine-tuning certain things. Uh, my boxing trainer, Don, which is my cousin, he will be cornering me again. He's always been there. He gets my hand game up many levels. Uh, my training partner, Joe, I might as well just call him a fucking coach because the guy has taken my grappling to, like, somewhere I never thought it'd be. Um, Kelson Tiger Prince has taught me some really wicked Brazilian jiu-jitsu shit. Um, man, I hate doing this because I'm going to forget people. <laughs> totally understandable. Um, I'll leave it at that. All right. Okay. I love them all. They're all awesome. 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 Ta well, take us through your routine, your week, um, of camp. Uh, what do you do Monday through Friday? Do you train on the weekends? Uh, take us through it. Your cardio, your... You're grappling your stand-up game. Um, do sparring two, maybe three times a week if I uh, if I'm lucky. I do grappling about three times a week. Cardio, I try to do high intensity, you know, because this is three three minute rounds. You don't want to be doing something that's like just drawn out slow cardio, like jogging. Sprinting is better. Um, I do lots of bike work and I try to put the gears to the highest. So I'm pushing and it's working my legs. Mm -hmm. uh, when I hit the bag, I'm always trying to just go, 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 go. Um, 
I've been lifting more for this fight because I'm fighting at 145, which is probably heavier than I should be fighting. The average 145 is probably, you know, close to 170. A lot of them, I'm like 150 right now. Okay. So I've been trying to lift a little more weight to be a little stronger. So if I have to take him down, it'll be easier to do so. If I hit him, it'll rock his world a lot easier, you know? Definitely, definitely. And, uh, now, uh, um, it's fighting, man. Yeah, I yeah. love fight related shit. So does uh, the weight cut isn't an, isn't going to be an issue, obviously, for you then, huh? No, sir. Awesome, awesome. That's so. Uh, how much confidence though does that give you heading into you know fight night and weigh ins and everything, where you're only going to cut a couple pounds, you're going to feel pretty healthy and pretty good. Um, how, what does that do for you mentally? I mean, it's very nice to feel like. I can eat breakfast the day of the weigh-ins <laughs> because <laughs> when I have gone to 135, it takes discipline and it leads to crankiness a lot. <laughs> not that I can't be disciplined. I eat clean all the time, but mm -hmm. it's, it's not fun when you have to fucking eat, taking little sips of water and fucking, you know, it's not fun. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, Frankie Edgar is a perfect example of a fighter who used to be at 155 when he only walks at about 160-ish. And he was a champion. He beat guys who had 20 pounds plus on him. So I take inspiration from that. Awesome. I was kind of leading into that. What other, like, you saying he inspires you, um, the way he fought and, um, you know, cut, not cutting a whole lot of weight? Is there anyone in your life or, excuse me, any at professional athlete that inspires you and uh, motivates you to stay focused and uh, continue fighting hard? Every champion, like, you know, like all the champs, Cejudo recently, he bursted into the championship mm -hmm. ranks. He really inspires me. Um, George St. Pierre was a big inspiration. It's too bad he isn't fighting Khabib for that 155 pound title. That would have been <laughs> nice. Um, everyone, man. Nick Diaz probably got me into this more than anybody. Okay. It was it his style that got you into it? What drew you into this? It was the relatability and the fact that, like, I've always heard my whole life, like, oh, you can't smoke, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> you can't smoke pot and uh, be an active, healthy, uh, motivated individual. And I just, I saw him, saw what he did, the work he puts in, he works harder than most, especially when he's active. And I was like, that's me, because my whole teenage years all i was doing was working on fitness man even before i was like training mma i was just working out working out working out now, do you and smoking believe, pot. <laughs> <laughs> i was about to ask you about that uh smoking pod do you believe that has like um um and give you an advantage or help you at all or do you feel it has no effect it's indifferent to how you perform um it certainly has an effect um too much is no good i'd say um, it's all about using it like a tool, man. Like a hammer can fucking bust shit up or it can fucking get the nail in, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so like with weed, you just need to know when to use it, what you're using it for. Like if I'm going to do a lifting session, I'm probably not going to smoke any. Okay. I'm going to do sparring or grappling or bag work. I love to take a toke before it definitely loosens you up and gets you in the zone helps focus so now i hear i, I from it. what i understand what i've read it says uh, marijuana or cbd it all, it all has like uh, anti-inflammatory in it um, is that something you use to help recover i don't take cbd oil specifically although i'd love to shit's expensive <laughs> if someone would sponsor me that'd be very nice um i should probably win this and then ask for that though um CBD, yeah, man, it's I've done my research and that's definitely a top notch tool for an athlete to use. Awesome. And I plan to. Now tell us um about like we talked about your opponent. Um, what's your prediction for this fight? Your thoughts about your opponent? Um, uh, do you have any words for him? How how do you feel going into this? I feel great. Like it's the best camp of my life. I'm in the best place mentally that I ever have been. Uh, that last fight, there were mental shortcomings, as I said. Mm -hmm. Every fight I fought before this, I felt like I wasn't in the right mindset. I wasn't. I didn't have that killer instinct enough. 
and uh things happen in life sometimes and they Mm -hmm. give you like a chip on your shoulder just trigger change in you something snaps something clicks and then things change you know and i think i'm hitting my stride now and i think the people around me are seeing that what are some of the biggest challenges you believe kyle presents to you in this fight good range control he's about two inches taller than me he's probably got a couple inches of reach um he moves his feet well like he doesn't make many mistakes with his footwork Mm -hmm. his hand his hands are good although i do see when he throws them some openings so you know he's good i'm this is the first time i'm going in with a mature mindset where i feel like this is going to be a challenge. I'm going to have a battle in front of me. Every other fight, I'm always telling people, like, I'm going to run through them in the first round. Now, I'm not saying I'm not going to run through them in the first round, but I'm ready for war, and I kind of expect a war, and I kind of expect to come home and bust it up a bit. Right. And I kind of bust it up right now, so I love it. It's all good. Awesome, awesome. And um, take us through um, traveling. You're coming from Canada. How far of a drive is it to Schenectady? Is that going to play a role at all? in your fight game if i had a big weight cut it sure would but uh small weight cut so it's easy it's only about six hours drive okay uh usually sleep on the drive if i can um stop and get some food don't overeat obviously mm-hmm. and yeah last time last time when i fought at 145 was davy i showed up to the weigh-ins about two hours early I checked myself on the scale i could have been 146 pounds i was 142.8 so I went back up to the hotel room. I took a one liter of fucking watermelon water. I drank that down. I had two cliff bars. And then I went down. I was 144.8 or some shit. <laughs> so, you know. Awesome. I'll be on weight. No problem. Nothing's going to mess cool. with me. Cool, cool. Yeah. And um, tell us a little bit about the difference between uh, the fight game. You, uh, I've seen a lot of, uh, like, Slim Lose gets, for Cage Wars, gets a lot of guys from Canada come down to fight on the show. Um, what's the difference between, like, I guess, the American amateur shows compared to the Canadian amateur shows? Um, is it happening as often up there, or not as often? Tell us a little bit about the fight game up there. Uh, it actually got banned. I, I fought twice here, up here in Ontario, and then it got banned, so I didn't have that option anymore. So then I started looking to get my pro license to start fighting pro up here in Canada. But you have to go through a lot of fucking medical testing. I, uh, I don't medical physicians aren't always perfect you know they make mistakes Mm -hmm. um so that didn't really work out but then luckily i have some good connections cody j saftik i'll shout him out right now uh he got me in touch for my first new york fight which was under victory cage fighting championships under john gibbons and then after i won that fight cage wars was very very eager to have me fight for them and Cage Wars is great. It's like the best organization around for amateurs. And uh, one big difference I noticed is in New York, there's some different rules than when I was fighting in Ontario. Okay. Like in Ontario, I, I'm i slick with heel hooks. And I threw up some heel hooks in one of my fights. Almost got a guy who has a very high-level grappling game. I fought Davey, and I didn't know that I couldn't do a heel hook. I went for a heel hook on him, and the ref jumps in. And I'm like, shit, what'd I do? Like, fuck, my bad. Um, so that's a little disappointing, but it's one little thing that we can't do. It's whatever. I can't wait to go pro. I want to use my elbows. I want to split skulls. Do you, do you feel like that's a top-level part of your game that you're not being able to utilize? Because I'm sure, like, you'll see, like, in the United States, or at least in New York, one of the third-party sanctioned bodies, um, they do the novice amateur rules, and then they do advanced amateur rules where it's no ground and pound to the body or to the head. Um, only to the body, and then advanced amateur you could do to the body and head, and but no elbows, and then pro obviously everything's fair game, including elbows. Is that um does that play a role at too in the way you fight? For sure. When I fought Chad Curcio and I uh, submitted him with the arm triangle in less than a minute, um, honestly, like if there was ground and pound allowed, I probably wouldn't have looked for that choke right away. And I probably would have looked to do some damage. He hit me with a good punch on the feet. I would have loved to pay him back for that. Uh, he got out of there unscathed and learned a lesson. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely awesome. awesome. Um, t- I, I, one question I like asking a lot of fighters, what's one thing about yourself that nobody knows but you'd like to share with everyone in the fans? 
I have lots of musical talent okay. that uh, will be seen in the future. I like to rap. I like to sing. I like to write creative writing. Cool. You play instruments? I used to, but I was never too efficient with it. But I will. I plan to again. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. All kinds of instruments. Um, now, I guess uh, anyone you want to recognize, um, what's your am- your uh, social media accounts, how people can get a contact you for tickets or follow your career as it's uh, progressing? Uh, just my Facebook, I try to keep pretty personal. Okay. I don't have too many like randoms on there. Uh, my Instagram, though, Robbie Bellmare, just Robbie Bellmare, no spaces, no dashes or anything, it's Robbie Bellmare. I can be followed on there for anyone who wants to see someone who's going to bring it every time. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you get in there and battling Kyle. Should be a great fight. Um, any last words before we wrap this up? Anything you want to shout out, um, mention, or say? Like I said, I try to avoid shout outs because I'll forget someone and I'll be like, fuck, I, got, I feel like I have to apologize, you know? Mm-hmm. So just... Anyone who sees this interview and hears this, tune into this fight. Kyle is a hell of a fighter. He brings it. He will fuck somebody up if they don't fuck him up first. So I'm going to go try and fuck him up first. Awesome. Well, Robbie Bellamere, I appreciate you coming on. Robbie's fighting Kyle Kaler at Cage Wars 41 on April 6th at Schenectady Rivers Casino. Make sure you get tickets from either Robbie, Kyle, or anyone else that's fighting on the card. Um, Stacked fight card should be an exciting night. If you can't go there, you can stream the fights on CageWarsNY.com. Make sure you check that out as well as you'll see myself alongside Will Barry commentating these awesome and exciting fights. So, Robbie, 100% appreciate you coming on. Best of luck in your fight coming up. And I will see you at the weigh-ins, man. Thank you very much, Kyle. Have a good one. See you there.